everyone. I am in Buffalo, Wyoming at the Willow Grove Cemetery, and we're here to visit a couple of Old West figures. And so let me show you where they're at within this cemetery. I'm having to hurry and work in between this sprinkler system. One of them had the sprinkler system going, and this is turning on right beside me, so hopefully we can get through this. But this is block eight, and it's on the very first row of who we're looking for. And uh, I'm not sure if that's a relative or not. It makes me wonder just because it's in line right here. But this is the Champion family. And we have Ben Champion right here, 1861 to 1929. And we have Dudley Champion, 1859 to 1893. But this is the real reason why we are here this is the grave of Nate Champion. Nathan David Champion, or Nate, was born on September 29, 1857, near Round Rock, Texas. He grew up to be a top cowboy, and after he took some cattle up to Wyoming, he decided to live there on a small ranch that he ran. Nate was honest and forthright, but he made the list of people that the cattle barons wanted to eliminate. It's been thought that it was because of his alleged support of a rival stock association called the Northern Wyoming Farmers and Stock Growers Association. The cattle barons ran the more powerful Wyoming Stock Growers Association, which implemented different rules that limited the smaller ranchers. Trouble came when the Northern Wyoming Association nominated Nate as their leader. The odd thing is that Nate wasn't even at the meeting. When he found out about it, he declined the nomination, but word had already reached out to the cattle barons, and it pretty well signed his death warrant. The barons labeled Nate as a cattle rustler. As a result, they brought in 50 henchmen and gunfighters to Nate's KC Ranch, and it was the first to be targeted in what became known as the Johnson County War. The group arrived at Nate's ranch on April 9, 1892, when four men were there, including Nate. Two men were trappers, and the other was Reuben Nick Ray, who was Nate's friend. We are all fortunate enough that this event was documented by Nate in his diary. These are his words. Me and Nick was getting breakfast when the attack took place. Two men with us, Bill Jones and another man. The old man went after water and did not come back. His friend went out to see what was the matter, and he did not come back. Nick started out, and I told him to look out that I thought someone was in the stable and would not let them come back. Nick is shot, but not dead yet. He is awful sick. I must go and wait on him. It is now about two hours since the first shot. Nick is still alive. They are still shooting, and they are all around the house. Boys, there is bullets coming in like hell. Them fellows is in such shape I can't get at them. They are shooting from the stable and the river and the back of the house. Nick is dead. He died about nine o'clock. I see smoke down at the stable. I think they have fired it. I don't know if they intend to let me get away this time. It is now about noon. There is someone at the stable yet. They are throwing a rope out the door and drawing it back. I guess it is to draw me out. I wish that duck would get out further so I could get a shot at him. Boys, I don't know what they have done with the two fellows that stayed last night. Boys, I feel pretty lonesome just now. I wish there was someone here with me so we could watch all sides at once. They may fool around until I get a good shot before they leave. It's about three o'clock now. There was a man in the buckboard and one in the horseback that just passed. They fired at them both as they went by. I don't know if they killed them or not. i seen lots of men come out on horses on the other side of the river and take after them. I shot at the men in the stable just now. Don't know if I got any or not. I must go and look out again. It don't look as if there is much show of me getting away. I see 12 or 15 men. One looks like unreadable. I don't know whether it is or not. I hope they did not catch them fellas as they run over the bridge towards the smiths. They are shooting at the house now. If I had a pair of glasses, I believe I would know some of those men. They are coming back. I got to look out. Well, they have just got through shelling the house like hell. I heard them splitting wood. I guess they're going to fire the house tonight. I think I will make a break when night comes, if alive. Shooting again. 
I think they will fire the house this time. It's not night yet. The house is all fired. Goodbye, boys, if I never see you again. Nathan D. Champion The henchman had pushed a burning wagon into the cabin, catching it on fire and forcing Nate to emerge. As soon as he did, he was shot down. During the seven-hour standoff, he was able to kill four men and wound several others. At the time of his death, he was just making his ranch into a homestead and had eight pack horses. Everyone that knew him personally said that he was an honest businessman. Dudley Champion was the brother of Nate, and he was the last to die in the Johnson County War. He was killed by Mike Shauncey near Horseshoe Bar Ranch near Lusk, Wyoming. Shauncey's friends claim it was self-defense, while Dudley's friends claim it was murder. This is a beautiful cemetery. You might see white things floating through the air. There are some moths, but these are cottonwood trees. There's some pine trees and cedar trees, of course, mixed in, but a lot of this is cottonwood seeds floating around. And off in the distance over there, you can see the mountains. So it's a really scenic cemetery, very peaceful, lots of deer, lots of birds. But right on the edge, and this is uh, block 51, right in the edge down this road next to this marker right here this is just a borderline marker here is who we're looking for joseph s lafors 1865 to 1940. joseph lafors was born in paris texas to james and mahala lafors his brothers sam ike roof and newton were all lawmen in some capacity Newton was killed in the line of duty serving as Deputy U.S. Marshal in Indian Territory. The town of LaFours, Texas is named for another brother named Perry. Joe grew up to be a cowboy and in 1885 he worked on a cattle drive that ended in Wyoming which led to him staying there. In 1887 he played a minor role in the recovery of a large herd of cattle rustled by the Hole in the Wall Gang. Later, he worked as a contract livestock inspector and detective where his job was to recover stolen livestock and apprehend cattle thieves in Wyoming and Montana. While in that capacity, he was involved in a number of gunfights. In 1899, he took part in a posse that set out to capture those responsible for the Wilcox train robbery, which was committed by the Hole in the Wall gang, led by the outlaw Butch Cassidy. The robbers eventually escaped. Later that year, Joe was appointed U.S. Deputy Marshal and he pursued a number of train robbers and outlaws in the Northwest. In 1901, he became famous for arresting and documenting a confession from the former lawman turned hired gunman, Tom Horn. Horn was tried and sentenced to hang. In 1902, Joe was working for the Iron Mountain Ranch Company in Helena, Montana. Allegedly, he was intending on infiltrating a gang of cattle rustlers, but he failed and he was fired in 1904. Afterwards, there is little known about his life other than he started working on an autobiography in 1935 called The Wyoming Peace Officer. It was published in 1953, but he never saw it as he died on October 1st, 1940. Now next to Joseph is Nettie W. 1872 to 1957. I don't know if this shows up on camera or not, but there are a lot of moths in here. I don't think I've ever seen that many moths in a cemetery before. And what's interesting about it is, it's right across from the lawman right there, the fours. That's interesting. I don't know if they're there because of him or not. So the fours grave is right straight ahead of me and that's block 51. This is block 52, and if you make your way over, you'll see this little section inside here that's pretty neat. There's another veteran section over that way, but this is a little larger, and this one is very eye-catching because of what's in it, and there's quite a few more markers. Now, there's veterans throughout this cemetery. They're not only in these, these little sections, but it is pretty interesting. John Wichard wages, Wyoming, machinist mate, second class, United States Naval Reserve in World War II, March 17, 1912 to August 7, 1971, 
Charles Farmer from Kansas. He was a fireman in the U.S. Navy during World War I, December 26, 1896 to March 22, 1972. So these are just different ones here. World War I and U.S. Navy over there. Quite a few. We have uh, Donald E. Jarrett, Wyoming, Specialist 5 in the Air Cavalry Division in Vietnam. So these are veterans from all over. I see a lot of World War I's, Vietnam's, World War II. Just looking out across and seeing what this is. Um, these are infantry soldiers. The uh, one right over here, Joseph D. Ortega, Wyoming. He was a bugler in the U.S. Army. World War I, July 25th, 1889 to May 20th, 1963. It is interesting just to kind of walk around and see what they did. Like he's a cook, Arthur Bell, uh, in the Signal Corps, World War I, June 30th, 1889 to December 25th, 1965. So it's interesting to read these memorial markers because it lets you know a little bit more about that person. But there is this rock right here and it looks like it has a plaque on it. And of course, a United States flag up there all in the midst of these cottonwoods and these pine trees that have some really small pine cones on them. But it also has this piece of weaponry right here and I do not know what it is. So if you're familiar with it, let me know. It's gray, so my thinking is it came off of a US Naval ship. Could have been Coast Guard. I don't know what it is, if someone's familiar with it. On the top it says number 15606, A period BS, underscore 1917 so if that helps anyone out with some research let me know but it is striking to see something like that and what a fitting memorial amongst all these heroes in here this uh, marker right here says this plot a gift from the city of buffalo to the powder river post number 13 american legion is dedicated to for the burial of the World War dead. And that explains why there's so many from World War I. So that marker's been here a while, it looks like. But like I said, there are World War II veterans as well as Vietnam veterans in here. What a view from this cemetery, those mountains in the Wyoming area, way off in the distance. I don't know if I can zoom in and you can see it. But there's a mountain right back there in the far background that has snow on it. Not a sight I'm used to seeing in Oklahoma and the Texas area. So that's going to do it for today's cemetery visit. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a little bit of something. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.